Friends, welcome to our garden, welcome to our homestead. I just got some really devastating news. I found out that I've been killing my garden slowly over the last seven years. Let me tell you how and why. Let's go. So I built this Back to Eden style garden in 2016 and in the first few years it produced so much food that we had to give it away. We're giving it away at church, we're giving it away to friends, whatever we could do because we just couldn't process and preserve that much food. It was a huge blessing. We honestly gave away hundreds of pounds of food and we didn't hardly have any disease and certainly no insects. And I would say that over the last three years, our garden has not produced much at all. We still do get enough to preserve a little bit and to eat uh, occasionally, but not like we used to. Battling insects has been the worst. Disease hasn't been terrible, but it's getting worse. But the insects are out of control. I planted over 20 squash plants this year. Pumpkins, butternut, Hopi gray, all those kinds of things, and then also had melons mixed in with those, I didn't get one, not one squash that was edible. And that's because the squash bugs completely devastated everything. So when these things start happening, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing wrong? Is there something in the environment that's bad? What is going on? You have to investigate. And that's why this year I finally did and spent the money on a really expensive agricultural soils test. And I'm having recommendations by a soil scientist on what to do for my soil. But he found some things in it that were completely devastating to me. I did a video on getting a good proper soils test, spending the money to do it. Click on that at the top of the screen. It is so important because without that, I would have not known what I was doing to this garden to make it stop producing. What he found in my soil were extremely high levels of sodium and that my soil pH was on the alkaline side. It was 7.4 and that is totally different than what this entire area of Texas usually experiences. When there's too much sodium in your soil, you are going to notice a lot of stunted plant growth. And I started noticing that a few years ago. So what did I do? I tried to add compost to the soil. That helped a little bit, but it didn't turn around what was already happening in my soil. You'll also notice a lot of fusillus wilt and a lot of spider mites. Those ones in particular will attack plants that are to have become toxic because of the sodium level. Now this video might get a little sciencey, but it's super important because if you don't know you're killing your vegetables and your fruits, then you've got a serious problem and you won't be able to grow food for your family. So what sodium does to a plant is prevent the uptake of other nutrients, prevents the uptake of iron, of zinc, of nitrogen, of potassium, and a lot of other ones. And most specifically, it prevents the uptake of the proper amount of calcium for a plant. Why is calcium so important? That's because it builds strong cell walls for one, and for two, it transports other nutrients around the plant. So if you've got weak cell walls and extreme deficiency in other nutrients, then those bugs understand that that's a weak plant and they only attack really weak plants. My garden has been devastated by insects because the salt has prevented calcium, most specifically, from getting into those plants. So where did the sodium come from and how high is it? So the next logical step to do is to test the water. I had that water tested it has 147 parts per million of sodium in that water. Normal is 40. So then for my soils test, my SAR, or sodium absorption ratio, was 7.7. .7. Anything above a three is problematic. I had done two waters tests, one with a local test company and one with one of those kits that you just send in. Neither of them 
indicated that I had a problem. The only way I was able to figure that out it was to go to the agricultural testing lab for water. That one's up in Missouri, it's called Ward Labs. I don't have a relationship with them. That's just the one my uh, soils consultant actually recommended to me. And their price isn't bad. I think it was like 35 or 40 bucks. And they gave me all this information that I did not get any other place. When I had those soil samples taken, I took some from my raised back to Eden style beds from the tilled areas of my garden and also from the beds in the greenhouse. And what my soils consultant showed me was that the sodium levels in the greenhouse, where I'm having a ton of bug pressure right now, were twice as high as what they were in the garden. And why is that? Obviously, it's raining out here in the garden, and that's important to get that sodium out of the soil because it's diluting it. Obviously, I've got no rain in the greenhouse. That's my well behind me. It has been here since about 1980, and it is roughly 400 feet deep. And who knew? that it had salty ocean water in the bottom of it. That's insane. I do have rainwater tanks, but they are not yet hooked up to my system for irrigation on the garden in the greenhouse. I need to get that hooked up quickly to counteract what's going on with that well. But in the summertime, we have extreme droughts around here in East Texas. And th that 5,000 gallons is not going to last very long when I'm watering in the summer. So what do we do? We're gonna have to deal with the water down in that well. The only two ways to get salt out of water is one, distillation, and that's totally not practical. Uh, it wouldn't work. And the other one is reverse osmosis. So reverse osmosis will take that salt out. That system for the amount of water that I use for irrigation and potentially for the house in the future will cost me about $3,000. Now you're asking yourself, is there any way you can filter it out through charcoal and like sand and everything like that? No, there isn't, unfortunately. So I'm blessed that I was able to find out what the problem is because I've been beating my head against the wall for years and spraying all kinds of organic things all over the garden and it was not helping. Why? Because the soil is sick. It's imbalanced and or unbalanced and there's an imbalance in it and it needs balancing out. So also in the short term, I can balance out the soil. And that's what my soils guy is doing for me is give me a recommendation based on the amount of sodium levels and the amount of deficiencies that are in it right now to be able to get things growing and to have less disease and pest pressure. But until I fix this, it's going to keep happening. So should I spend the money on the soils amendments first? or spend the money on the RO system for the well? I don't know. That's what I've got to figure out. So I want you to analyze what you have going on at your house. If you're still in the city, you've got probably chlorine issues in your soil or some other things. Who knows what water system you have and what they have contained within that water. But you need to start digging down. If things are not right in your garden, look at the soil and look at what you are putting onto it. I hope this helps you because it will really affect growing food for your family, especially in these tough times coming up. Now I want you to go click on this video right here, which talks about the benefits of having a greenhouse on your homestead. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.